Greetings, unsettled souls, and a welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks, and we have all kinds of news here. It is Mother's Day, so I wanted to go ahead and mention this real quick. Um, but first of all, happy Mother's Day to uh, all the families and uh, whatnot that are hearing this stuff. Second of all, if for any reason uh, you'd like to do something really nice for me, uh, my uh, mother is uh, currently in a rehab facility. Uh, not, nothing horrible, but she is getting her knees done, and she needs uh, copious amounts of physical therapy before she's able to get through this. So it's going to be a long, grueling summer. So if you'd like to say a prayer for dear old mom, I would appreciate it. Um, also, if you're tuning in and you're, it's, it's Mother's Day is over by the time you see this, there is so much news in this that you're going to be watching it a year from now. This is going to be a really good one. Um, for one thing, how many of you think this BLM thing is going to get worse and worse and worse with them trying to get further and further infringements on our rights? Well, I have right here a, uh, a story that proves that we might be moving in that direction. So we might be looking back talking about how correct I was. Let's hope not. Uh, the DenverPost.com Recapture Canyon, Utah to be the site of the next BLM showdown. Recapture Canyon is a calm place of cottonwood shade, sinuous streams, beaver ponds, and birdsong. Ancient cliffside dwellings and ground dotted with pot sheds lend in an, era, an aura of quite mystery. But this canyon, so close to Blanding, Utah, that locals were there consider it their wild backyard. It is also the site of the long-standing but escalating anti-federal government uh, Cliven Bundy Fuhrer. On the Saturday, protesters planned to drive their ATVs past a closed to motorized use sign and into the 11-mile-long canyon to show their disdain for the Bureau of Land Management's decision to keep the area off-limits to vehicles. Good! The BLM, after a huddle with the FBI, the Utah Attorney General's Office, the Utah Department of Public Safety, and San Juan County Sheriff Rick Eldridge, has decided once again to stand back and avoid confrontation. Um, but Juan Palma, Utah's director of the BLM, issued a less conciliatory statement. The U BLM Utah has not and will not authorize the proposed ride. Like, we give a rat's ass and will seek all appropriate civil and criminal penalties against anyone who uses a motorized vehicle within the closed area. Palman's statement read in part, well good, what you do is all of you just don't pay the fine and there's not much they can do about it. Um, it's anybody's guess as to how many ATVs will converge on the town of 3,500 for the recapture protest. I'm happy about it. Um, it says that some Indian reservations, uh, some people are upset because um, it's ancient land. Well, you know what? If you haven't got the relics off of the land and all this time, somebody riding their SUV over it, these ancient grounds are not going to do more harm than just letting them sit there. This is ridiculous. Um, where is this? Find this exact quote. It doesn't make any damn sense. That's why I want to find it. Environmental groups, including Durango-based Great Olds Boards of Wilderness and the Southern Utah Wilderness Alliance, two people never to donate to, fear any encroachment of motorized users in the canyon. The Navajo Nation isn't happy about ATVs rolling through artifact-rich area where Navajos currently hunt, hold ceremonies, and gather wild roots, berries, and medicinal herbs. Well, I highly doubt anybody's going to go driving an ATV over a berry tree. Most people I know that use ATVs try to avoid mowing over trees and bushes. Ridiculous. It's absolute mind rot. I'm sorry. It's mind rot. Independent.co.uk. Uh, Saudi Arabia orders 1,000 lashes for 10-year sentence for editor and a 10-year sentence for the editor of a website that discussed religion. This is why, and I'm not talking about your average, most of your average everyday Islamists, uh, that's like clumping Christians into one category. I hate when people do that. I am talking about the simple words on the page. The reason that people fear Islam more than Judaism 
is because while the Jews and the Arabs are busy doing horrible things to each other, you don't normally find the Jewish people, even, even the, the, the freaky Jew people, even the Jew people that are trying to blow up, you know, Islamists or whatever, the, the, the Jews that are not on the right side of history, even they are not trying to force the world to become uh, uh, Jews. Islamists are always, these kinds of Islamists, again, are always trying to ram their belief down somebody else's throats. And I'm not talking about a Christian handing you a pamphlet. I'm talking about giving you 1,000 lashes and sending you 10 years to, 10 years to prison. Okay, Christians do not act like that by and large. Jews do not act that way. Hindus do not act that way. Buddhists, no. Who? The sect of Islam that wants this Sharia law BS everywhere. Listen, we don't want to be Islamic. We don't give a damn what you want, and we're not going to follow Mohammed. Leave us alone. You can say that, and there's somebody somewhere that wants to cut your head off. But if you say, hey, I don't want to be a Hindu. They don't try to kill you. The Islamists, get these idiots out of your religion and people will stop fearing you so much. A Saudi Arabian court has sentenced the editor of a website that discussed religion into the ultra-conservative Islamic kingdom to 10 years in jail and a thousand lashes. That could kill him. Um, Reef Badawi, who started the Free Saudi Liberals website, was arrested on June 2012 and charged with cybercrime and disobeying his father, a crime in the Arab fascist state, local media has reported. His website, it goes on, included articles that were critical of senior religious figures such as Saudi Arabia's Grand Mufti, hey Mufti, bite me, and allegedly insulted eh, Islam and religious authorities, according to Human Rights Watch. Prosecutors had demanded Badawi be tried for apostasy, a charge which carries the death penalty, but this was dismissed by the judge. Do you see Jews taking people that speak badly of them, their own religion, their other Jews, taking other Jews and killing them for saying bad things about uh, Netanyahu? No, you don't. You see this here. Do you see uh, Americans killing Christians? who say bad things about other Christians. No, you don't. You don't, I don't, I don't remember hear, hearing about this in India. I don't remember hearing about this in China. With their religion, well, what is it with this? This is why. Badawi was originally sentenced to seven years in prison and 600 lashes in July last year. Oh, so kind. But an appeals court overturned the sentence and ordered a retrial, which then earned him a more severe sentence. His punishment comes shortly after Saudi Arabia criticized Norway's human rights record and accused it of not doing enough to counter criticism of the Prophet Muhammad. We don't give a damn about the Prophet Muhammad, do you understand me? The Gulf state also demanded all criticism of religion and of the Prophet Muhammad to be made illegal in Norway. Bite me! Ridiculous. You know what? I'm a Christian. My religion gets stepped on every day. People love to take nine million stabs at Christians. I don't want them to get their head cut off. I don't want them sentenced to 10 years in prison. Maybe they insult me. Maybe they insult God. I can take it. God's bigger than me. What is it with these people? Badawi's lawyer, human rights activist Walid Abu al Kair will not be able to represent him in an appeal because he has also been jailed and is currently awaiting trial on criminal charges that include breaking allegiance with the king and making international organizations hostile to the kingdom. I was already hostile to the kingdom. Uh, philosophically only. Uh, listen, people. This kind of thing makes me sick. They, they wanted to nail a Greenwald's attorney. Uh, Greenwald. They wanted to nail Greenwald for uh, the Edward Snowden leak. They, the, the countries like to go after the people that are trying to help the people that are doing right. And uh, they're, they're just doing it for religious purposes here. His retrial led to a judge to impose a harsher punishment. That judge should have his robe shoved up his ass. I can't even read any more of this. And a string of royal... I gotta read... Oh, God, I'm, I might be nauseous. 
and a string of royal decrees and an overreaching new piece of legislation to deal with terrorism generally, the Saudi king Abdullah has clamped down on all forms of political dissent and protest that could harm public order. It could just harm you wanting to be a god like King Jong-un thinks he is. And again, I mean, I know we're talking, I get, even Kim Jong-un, even there, it's not, religion isn't treated like that there. It's almost barred. Uh, but uh, it's the same kind of thing. You speak badly about him and you could be sent to the, the North Korean prison. WSJ.com protests swell at Beverly Hills Motel. More on this. A pink stucco palace known as the Beverly Hills Hotel has long been a symbol of Hollywood glamour and affluence. A place where Elizabeth Taylor decamped for six of her eight honeymoons. But now it's become the unlikely epicenter of protest against a new set of harsh laws enacted by the Islamic country of Bruni. The opulent hotel is part of Dorchester Collection, a luxury chain owned by the Sultan of Bruni. This week, the tiny, oil-rich Asian country set off a storm of celebrity protests and boycotts by introducing Islamic laws that include death by stoning for homosexuals and adulterers. Isn't that great? You got the left going, oh, you can't speak badly about Islam. I ain't speaking badly about Islam. I'm speaking badly about idiots in Islam. Well, you can't do that. We need to protect them. So they got the most prestigious hotel, and who do they go after? Homosexuals and adulterers, the left's favorite people. And again, I have no problem with a, a gay person. It's not my point. My point is they're pandered to by the left, and now the very people that they pander to is getting hosed by other people that they pander to. Over the last past several days, 20 events have been canceled at the Beverly Hills property, a loss of about $2 million in revenue for the hotel, according to Dorchester. And yes, I, I do support this. I absolutely support this. I'm not, I mean, in this instance, yeah, you, I wouldn't stay at the hotel if you gave me the room. Local politicians and celebrities are also boycotting the nearby Hotel Bel Air in Los Angeles, the hotel's more subdued sister property, two places that I am in favor of everyone listening to my voice to avoid. Big names like Jay Leno and Ellen DeGeneres are arguing boycotts, and the Beverly Hills mayor and council are calling for the Dorchester to sell the famed hotel. Well, Ellen, aren't you happy you were part of the people that stuck up for the... Bruni would never do something like that. Well, bam! Way to go. Are you happy you voted for Obama now? <sighs> Dorchester, which runs 10 hotels worldwide, and I hope they lose all of them, is looking to expand globally and has said that it is seeking to acquire the luxury property hotel in New York. Well, let's hope he doesn't. They don't. Whatever. Um, when we heard what was going on in Bruni, we said it doesn't fit our philosophy, Sil Elaine, leader and head of teen support organization that abruptly moved the fundraiser and 500 people. Well, good. Uh, you can read the rest of the article. But basically, it's not enough that there are certain cities that have Sharia law in parts of Islam, and obviously Saudi Arabia to some degree. But what's even worse is they're not just, ha they want to spread this everywhere. And I've said on here a million times, the way the Jews treat the Arabs in many instances is terrible. And it's not justified by anything. It's vile and it's wrong. Then again, if these people are your neighbors, you know, and let's say it's only one out of every 1,000 Islamists. Maybe it is. I, I think I've known a, a handful of Islamic people and we had no problems. We had a wonderful time together. But as, a, and as an institution, it is the only religion that is currently running things and creating such massive problems uh, for its neighbors. Like Michael Savage said, um, most of the uh, hot spots in the world have something to do with some Islamic country not getting along with its neighbors. And what sucks in this, what sucks in it the most, is the average Islamist, the average Joe sitting there like you and me right now. He didn't do anything wrong. And he shouldn't have anything bad said about his religion. And that's not what I'm doing. What I'm saying is this is why the religion is perceived as such. For the same reason that people hear I'm a Christian and they automatically think that I live this great moral life and I think I'm better than everybody else. I'm probably worse than most everybody else. But the perception of Christianity is often that way. 
And I think that's what's happening here with Islam. Friends, do me a favor. Look up the work of Mike McLaughlin. He is an amazing writer. You can find him on Facebook.com. He is working on an entire vampire story, like a novel. He's got tons of short stories for sale, poems for sale, lots of good stuff for sale. So go there. Let him know you heard about it on The Correct Views and get some of the best reading you've ever had. Um, where should you do your reading? At the Arcadia Grill. It's located on Court Avenue in downtown Canton. It's some of the best foods you'll ever eat. It's Mother's Day. Head down there. Let them know Sam from The Correct View sent you there. And enjoy the best Mother's Day gift that you and your family have ever had. Arcadia Grill, Court Avenue, downtown Canton. Guys, a few more stories to get to. The market ticker, Derringer. If you take out black-on-black -black homicide, 75% of all gun murders disappear. Did you hear that? That's three quarters for you Lady Gaga fans. 75% of all gun violence, gun murders, excuse me, disappear if you factor out black on black crime. Am I black? Clearly not. Am I happy to hear this? No. No, I'm not. Because... Let me, let me tell you, I'm a DJ, let me, let me tell you something I've noticed. The whites in this country are getting the stupidest people sold to them as great. Now, do I ever listen to anything that's not wholesome? Yes, I do. Combi Christ and the Lords of Acid, to name two. But that's not all that there is in my music collection. I'm excited about the new Judas Priest. I loved the last Skinny Puppy CD. The uh, Aesthetic Perfections, Dark Half, was amazing. That's real new. Um, dumb rednecks and idiots like Kesha are sold to white people as cool. Black people are sold that it's cool to be a hood and cool to be a thug and to get your own. So you've got brainless, bubble-headed, white rednecks and uh, trailer park Kesha fans and people shooting each other as what is sold as good. Do I think anything should be censored? No. No, I don't. But I do think that the record labels, and they're, let's face it, they're doing this because it's hard to replace uh, Led Zeppelin if they break up or they argue. It's not hard to replace Kesha. You need a drum machine and a bimbo. So if you sell them as great, they're easy to replace because obviously she can't sing. Um, it used to be in all other generations, you had tons of music. In the 70s, you had disco, you had punk, you had uh, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, that, that whole movement. You had uh, Cream, uh, 80s. You had Devo, you had Metallica. You had Slayer, you had uh, Bill Biv DeVoe. You had everything. And on and on and on. Um, since 2000, you've had pop, hip-hop, and R&B. A little bit of rock if it sounds like Nickelback. Bam! That's the last 15 years. And don't tell me it's my age. It's to do with my age. It's a matter of history. It's never happened when only one kind of music is sold. Never. Never, ever, never. This is awful. Um, I'm going to read you some of this. Um, the Guns Violence Issue by Carl Derringer. He really nails this. Take away the AstroTurf games like the so-called grassroots organizations that sprung up by magic out of Newton, and you wind up with a truly ugly truth when it comes to gun violence in this country. Most of it is gang-related. Most of the gangs are in the inner cities, and our president, along with the rest of the so-called mainstream media, simply refuses to address it. And uh, again, I'm not afraid to address it. I have absolutely nothing against black people. I, as a matter of fact, I'm not even, you know what, I'm not even going to say who my black friends are because then I go ahead and sound like that typical. But let's just say that somebody who is very, very important to me is African American. Very, one of the closest people in my life. The issue is what is the perception and you guys see that's that that's where this show is going how is islam perceived how are white people perceived when you've got people like john mccain and uh, you've got people like bill clinton as your role models white people are rich people people of privilege that look down on other people and uh cheat on their wives like bill clinton did 
um, white people are snotty and arrogant. And you know what? Some of the most successful ones are. That's why white people are perceived that way. The media doesn't sell you the really awesome person that you know that's black. The guy you hang out with every week. They don't sell you him. They sell you Jay-Z wearing a shirt that says, do what thou wilt, which is do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law, the, the calling card of Satanism. Um, this is perception. It is done to keep white people and black people at each other's throat. And it's done to dumb down the country. Because when you have done those things, then the black man and the white man doesn't see that we're being hosed by the government. Bush, white, is as bad as Obama, black. <gasps> Wait a minute. You mean Christians and Islam, Islamists get along? Yeah, they get along every day. If you're an Islamist, welcome to the show, because I highly doubt you're a scumbag. I know that they're rare. It is what is sold to people as cool. And unfortunately, according to this study, a lot of African Americans seem to be buying into this. Um, and again, and the music didn't create the culture. The culture created the music. The music didn't make anybody do anything. Take the warning labels off this. Why is that being sold as good? Because that is easy to replace. That's why. And unfortunately, they're killing each other in droves. And no, uh, sorry, my people. No, that's not good. That's terrible. Why? Because there's a lot of Americans that are never going to get to be the most that they can be because they bought into a lifestyle that involved them hurting each other. Um, one of my favorite commentators to ever, ever live, if I could be one-tenth as good as he is, I would be so happy, Walter Williams. He has got to be one of the most intelligent people ever. And you know what? How, ma how many Walter Williams have been shot by uh, other black people? This is sad, people. This isn't good. This, this is terrible. Take a recent shooting in Chicago. The media pictures of both shooter and victim are radically inaccurate, measured against their own social media postings. The truth about that particular shooting, the gun originally claimed to be stolen wasn't. It instead passed through a number of hands, at least one of them on probation, and a second person who allegedly took the weapon to the shooter, knowing it was going to be used to commit violence, a 30-ish old aunt who allegedly went for the show, went to watch to get shot. Someone who unjammed the gun after it malfunctioned and gave it back to the girl who had just tried to murder the victim but failed to fire the weapon properly. Nor is that all. We have another case where a cute little charter school graduate, as presented by the family and the media, appears to have a bunch of social media postings of her bearing weapons of all sorts, including a rather large revolver that looks like right out of a Clint Eastwood movie. Um, she, she capped two people before killing herself. She was 17. So we blame the gun. 75% of all gun violence in the country that results in a murder is black on black crime. So how do we fix this? How do we solve this? Maybe blacks and whites should fight some more. No. Maybe we need to realize that the Islamist that is being sold to us isn't like any Islamist you or I know. The white bigot that hates all black people, he's almost never there. I'm happy to say very, very rare. Black people that absolutely hate white people. It's, it's almost not there. But thuggery is there. Uh, uh, look, what, what a what, white music that's stupid? Chew tobacco, chew tobacco, chew tobacco, spit. Is one of the most popular songs of last year. I know because I had to play it and wanted to hang myself. Um, you know what? That's an idiot. That's an idiot. That's a dumbing down of the country. I, I don't think it should be banned, but that is what is sold. That is what is pushed. And nothing else is. So, like I said, much of this show has been dealing with perceptions. It's time for us to get over the perceptions and talk about these things. And if it's been an uncomfortable show for you, guess what? It needs to be. 
Because it's time that we quit letting the government keep whites and blacks and Christians and Jews and Asians and Islamists all fighting each other while they hose us. We're better than this. Mercola.com, two more stories. Antibiotic-resistant genes in cow manure may add to the threat of untreatable disease. I have started taking probiotics uh, over this article. Uh, I've thought about doing it for quite some time. Your immune defenses are key in protecting you from all disease, including cancer, toxic poisons, infections, inflammation, and even the ravages of aging. What many fail to realize is that your immune system actually begins in your gut and that maintaining optimal intestinal health is paramount in fight against both acute and chronic disease. Your gastrointestinal tract, where 80% of your immune system resides, houses some 100 trillion bacteria, about 2 to 3 pounds worth. These bacteria actually outnumber your body cells to about 10 to 1 and are instrumental for a wide variety of bodily functions. One of the fastest ways to destroy your gut microbiome is through the use of antibiotics, which does not discriminate from pathogenic and beneficial bacteria. In other, why, in other words, the two to three pounds worth of bacteria gets almost entirely killed, the good bacteria, when you take antibiotics. Uh, well, I'm not one of those people that believe that antibiotics are so grossly overprescribed because I've, I've done it a hundred times. If you want me to do it again, leave it in my comment line. Viral infections oftentimes morph into bacterial infections, so the fact that it doesn't help is in fact a lie. Uh, it's not a fact at all. But this is different. They're putting a bacteria, a, a, antibiotics into farm animals where they're not even sick. And that's getting into the cow manure, which is getting into everything, including organic foods. Listen to this. Besides allowing the overgrowth of pathogenic microorganisms, this can also lead to a syndrome called leaky gut syndrome, whereby your intestinal wall is damaged, interfering with how your body absorbs nutrients and filters out waste and toxins, thereby exacerbating a wide variety of diseases, including autoimmune disorders. Um, it's a real problem. It really is, because... The reason they're doing it is rather than raising the animals ethically, even the Bible says, uh, what is it, uh, uh, respect your beast, uh, take into account the needs of your beast. Um, that doesn't mean putting 10 chickens into a uh, cage where they can't even turn around and then throwing antibiotics in there so you don't have to feed them as much. And uh, if they get sick, it doesn't really matter. They'll get fatter anyway that way. Just feed them. They can't move. They're in agony their whole lives. And then you eat the antibiotics. How do you stop this? You make that kind of thing illegal. You guys have all, you guys all know, I eat meat. I eat meat all the time. But most of the meat I eat isn't organic. But if we make a big enough stink about it, and if every time you go to the store, I, I'll be the first to say the organic producers are bastards too because they don't need to sell a $3 steak because it's organic as a $9 steak. I know it costs more to be organic, but it's not three times as much. Um, they're part of the problem. So but what do you want to do? How can you fight back? Buy one or two organic mills every week or two. One, one a week even. If everyone does that, that's going to make a huge cut on regular beef, and organic beef is going to go up. Organic chicken, whatever. They even have organic, uh, like, ready-made dinners. If you do that, it will cost you a little more, not substantial anymore, and you'll be hurting these people. And then maybe the non-organic producers can at least do things that are not a detriment to our health. Guys, the very last thing I want to get to, I'm going to speed it up. I've gone a little long. Photograph. Uh, photographing is not a crime. I love this site. Uh, photographing uh, police is not a crime. Photography is not a crime. The dumb deal of the day. For those of you that don't know, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes out once a month. And those who don't make the cut are peppered throughout the month like this one is. A disturbing dash cam video shows a group of Michigan police officers pouncing on a mentally ill man who was doing nothing more than standing on a residential street trying to fix his chain. The first Dearborn cop pulls up, steps out of the car, and begins doning gloves, a usual indicator that he's about to get physical. Yeah, or do roadside searches without changing gloves on two women, like we covered last year. 
And sure enough, he does, insisting on patting Ally Bay down, down for weapons, even though he was not doing anything that would have given the cop a reasonable suspicion that he had or was about to commit a crime. If anything, the cop should have had a reasonable suspicion that Baydam was mentally ill 